Madeline Burkhalter, and this is my diversity plan for Fett Middle School. It was created for a class at Jacksonville State University, EFD 552. So first, let's talk a little bit about what diversity is. Uh, through this class and the research that I've done in the last two months, um, these are some things that I've come up with that I think describe what diversity is. Uh, the concept of diversity means understanding how to accept and respect others. It also means that we must understand each individual's uniqueness and recognize our individual differences. These can include but are not limited to race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, age, abilities, as well as their religious and political beliefs. Often when we talk about diversity, we look at race, but there are several, several different ways that we are diverse. Um, understanding diversity also means exploring these differences in a safe, positive and nurturing environment that celebrates everyone's unique differences. Uh, we must move beyond tolerance to acceptance. So the purpose of this plan, uh, it is the intent of this diversity plan to help the faculty and students at that middle school to embrace the cultural differences and contributions of all races and nationalities Fett Middle School is fortunate, fortunate to serve students and their families who represent a number of diverse backgrounds. So let's look at school demographics just a little bit. Uh, Fett Alabama is a rural community that's located in northwest Alabama. Fett Middle School is the only middle school in Fett County. The diverse population of Fett and Fett County continues to change rapidly. For that reason, we must prepare all students for diverse collegiate and professional work environments. Fett Middle School for 2018-2019 is a Title I school and has an enrollment of 402 students from grades 5 to 7. The ethnic makeup of those students are 292 Caucasians, 89 African Americans, and 26 of Asian and Hispanic descent. 77% of the school receives free or reduced lunch. Currently, there are 22 full-time teachers, two part-time teachers, and two administrators at Fett Middle School. There are 16 academic teachers, two physical education teachers, one physical education aide, two career technical education teachers, three special education teachers, and four special education aides. The racial makeup of teachers and aides is 26 Caucasians, three African Americans, and one Asian. There are also 25 females and five males. This makes the ratio of teachers to students 20.2%. Several of the teachers at Fenton Middle School have advanced degrees, including master's degrees and educational specialist degrees. Uh, supporting data. So every year, um, the last two, the Global Scholar has been given to students in fifth through eighth grade. Uh, this is going to be the current Global Scholar data for this year. Before that, we were giving a different test, so there's not several years of the same test given to look at. So this is this year's current scores. This is what was taken in August. Um, this is going to look at reading growth and math growth. So this one chart is breaking down into ethnicities, um, African Americans, Caucasians, and other. It looks at students that scored far below benchmark below benchmark, above benchmark, and far above benchmark. So it's clear from the chart that students um, that were diverse, this is you know your subgroups, your African Americans, and your Caucasians scored about the same when you break down the population. Um, most students were either right below benchmark or right above benchmark. Um, there were not as many that were far below. Um, for math, it's a little different than reading. Um, the numbers are less. Uh, in many areas, there's more students um, that did uh, below or far below in math than they did in reading. So there is a little bit of a gap when you deal with ethnicity. Um, the biggest gaps come when you do with free or reduced lunch. Um, this shows students that scored far below, below, above, and far above far above when you deal with free and reduced lunch. So there are 277 students at that middle school who, who either receive free or a reduced lunch rate. Um, then there are students that do not receive free or reduced lunch is 117. 
So clearly, this is why we were taught on one school, 75% of the population has to receive free or reduced lunch. We have 77%. Um, students that um, received free or reduced lunch, there were 39 that were considered far below the benchmark. There were zero students who um, did not receive free or reduced lunch far below. So clearly, there is a gap here. Um, the same with the number of students that are considered below. Um, same thing down here when you get to math, there are more students that received free and reduced lunch that were far below than there were students that did not receive free and reduced lunch. So clearly there's a socioeconomic gap. Um, the other thing I looked at was students participation in student organizations, groups, and teams. Um, at that middle school we have a lot of things going on. Um, most of these extracurricular activities occur in 7th and 8th grade. They do not in 5th grade. But I took it and I broke down all of the organizations, student groups. I looked at the percentage of students that participated. Then I looked at the percentage of students that were eligible out of our 402 student population. So this would be the percentage of students that uh, could participate out of the whole student population. And then the percentage of African American students that participated, percentage of Caucasian students that partic participated, and then the number of students that are free and reduced lunch that participated. Um, the biggest gap that I found was in the amount of students that are free and reduced lunch that participated. Um, when you looked at band, concert band, choir, and fly detail, there in football, there was really not a gap between the amount of students that participated that were on free and reduced lunch. But when you looked at the other activities, such as FCCLA, FBLA, FMSY Robotics, cheerleading, majorettes, basketball, baseball, softball, those percentages, there obviously was a huge gap. Um, you can even look right here with the majorettes. There's not even a student that receives free or reduced lunch that is a majorette. Um, the same with cheerleading, it's 2%. With robotics, it's 8%. It was like two students. Um, FPLA, SNCLA, you have 6% and 13%. So clearly there's a gap in the amount of students that participate in extracurricular activities and receive free or reduced lunch. Often we found that um, money and cost is the reason for this. So that's going to be one of our goals here in a moment. So after looking at all the data and analyzing everything, um, I came up with a mission. So the mission for this diversity plan and that middle school is teaching our children and ourselves to live, learn, and work together in an ever-changing, diverse world. And so there's, this is going to be my goals. I have three. Uh, the first one is to increase cultural awareness of all students, teachers, administrators, and staff at that middle school. There are four strategies um, that I think apply to this goal. The first one is all faculty and staff will participate in cultural diversity training. Um, at the beginning of the school year, faculty and staff will take a tour of the community to see exactly what type of conditions many of their students live in. Teachers will also participate in a book study each semester that deals with diversity. The faculty and staff will work in groups to read the book and summarize the book. Each group will then present their findings to the entire group. Uh, strategy two is to conduct monthly discussions with school faculty and staff to reinforce cultural diversity goals. Uh, these discussions will occur at each monthly faculty meeting. Uh, strategy three is to conduct a school climate survey for all grades to take three times a year. Students will be given a survey at the beginning of the school year, one in the middle, and then one at the end of the school year. This will allow the faculty and staff to gauge the impact of their goal to make the school a more acceptable place for every student. Uh, and strategy four is to identify and provide opportunities for students to gain a better understanding of other ethnic groups. Goal two is to increase community engagement and parental involvement at that middle school. Um, there are three strategies for this goal. The first one is to support and promote, promote cultural celebrations within the school setting, host events that highlight each culture that is found within the school. These events would be hosted and all students would be encouraged to participate in these events. Strategy two, survey families about their interests to find out how the school can promote, excuse me, provide more opportunities to get them involved within the school. Often, you know, parents don't feel like there's an opportunity for them to be involved, so we would like to get their feedback. 
Um, the findings of this survey would allow the school to better serve the needs of their students and their families. Through the survey, the school can provide more culturally diverse events to promote community involvement. And strategy three is to enlist the corporation of community organizations to conduct informal forums about cultural diversity. They will also conduct culturally diverse assemblies for all students, faculty, and staff quarterly. And then the last goal is to develop student engagement and learning opportunities to increase participation of underrepresented students in all extracurricular activities at that middle school. Students here are engaged in extracurricular activities in turn display positive attitudes about school and often find more academic success. So there are two strategies for this one. The first one is to improve teacher to student relationships with the goal of fostering student interest in all extracurricular activities. Develop a mentoring program aimed at building relationships between students and faculty. And then strategy two is to create a scholarship program that would allow students to get community sponsorships to join all extracurricular activities. Um, this would be done through an application process. Um, so the application process would be created for students that wish to join or participate in extracurricular activities. Partnerships with community members would allow for funds to aid students in participating in these extracurricular activities. Students would fill out an application, which would then be forwarded to the community members, who would then provide the scholarship funds for those students to participate. So registration fees, trips, t-shirts, those type of things is what we're looking at funding for. Uh, students in the fifth and sixth grade need to be exposed to the student organizations and clubs that they can participate in when they get in seventh and eighth grade. Often their lack of knowledge is the reason for non-participation. For this reason, a student representative from each of the student organizations meet with the fifth and sixth graders to educate them. It is a good idea to involve the fifth and sixth grade in events going on around the school that they might one day be involved in. So this is my diversity plan for Fett Middle School. It includes, I think, three goals that are attainable that we can um, reach, and I thank you for your time.